Dear conference participants, dear friends, the 17th of June, 1944, ranks among the greatest days in Iceland's history. At Thingvellir, where the island's chieftains founded their parliament some thousand years before, Iceland declared its independence. In 1944, almost a quarter of the population was gathered there to witness the moment Iceland became a fully sovereign republic. Iceland's first president was also elected on that day. During the Second World War, over 200 Icelandic fishermen and sailors lost their lives at sea. War-related fatalities accounted to 0.2% of the population. Under the protection of British and American forces, Iceland enjoyed more security and prosperity than almost all other nations in Europe. After the war, a Nordic-style welfare state was established in Iceland. In the summer of 1944, Soviet forces captured Lithuania. Three years of Nazi rule came to an end, but decades of Soviet oppression followed. For the people of Lithuania, these were years of horror. It has been estimated that between 1940 and 1953, population losses in the country amounted to more than one million persons, a third of the pre-war number of inhabitants. The fate of the two countries in the second half of the 20th century could hardly have been more different. For Iceland, geography was the country's best friend. For Lithuania, its biggest foe. On the 17th of June, 1994, tens of thousands of Icelanders convened again at Thingvellir to celebrate 50 years of independence. It was a glorious day, bright and sunny. On that day, I was not among the happy crowd. On that day, I was in Vilnius. As a history student at the University of Iceland, I had decided to write my master's thesis about Iceland's support for Baltic independence in 1990 to 1991. During my visit to Lithuania, I interviewed politicians, statespersons and officials, all described their deep gratitude for Icelandic actions when the Baltic countries were fighting for their rightful place among the world's free states. All mentioned the moral support they received when Iceland's foreign minister visited the three countries during the fateful days of January 1991. All mentioned the decisive step taken by the Icelandic government in August that year, when Iceland became the first country to resume diplomatic relations with Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. I also have vivid memories of the gratitude I felt everywhere, on the streets, in restaurants, at bus stops, when people learned that I was from Iceland. At you, Islandia, thank you, Iceland, was a very common phrase I heard. We Icelanders are thankful for, and even proud of, this praise. Iceland was and is a tiny state, unable to change dramatically the course of history. But we like to think that what the Icelandic authorities did to assist the Baltic peoples was the right thing to do, and that Iceland managed to influence leaders in larger states. After my visit to Lithuania in 1994, I wrote my thesis on Iceland's support for Baltic independence and later became a professor of history at the University of Iceland. In academic research, critical thinking is imperative. We need to compare sources, look at events and developments from different viewpoints, reach conclusions that might not be liked in all sectors of society. Free speech, academic freedom, these are essential features of a strong democratic society. Such societies also need optimism and the sense that people have more to keep them united than to divide them. As head of state, it is my task to foster such feelings. At the same time, we must be realistic and even critical if need be. When we look to the future, Icelanders and Lithuanians can certainly be hopeful and optimistic. Still, History holds lessons for us. In the 20th century, Iceland was blessed 
while Lithuania was burdened with one catastrophe after another. Today, both nations enjoy independence, a vital foundation for prosperity and nationhood. Yet, both nations have faced severe difficulties. During the financial crisis of 2008, Iceland was on the brink of national bankruptcy. Since independence, the population of Lithuania has decreased substantially. Young people, in particular, want to seek their fortune abroad. Independence is a precondition for prosperity and national pride, but it does not solve all problems. All states, whether large or small, face constant democracy-building challenges. With that in mind, I welcome this conference, look forward to acquainting myself with its results, and wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. Thank you.